Wingstop stock, ticker symbol WING. This stock is up 83% on the one year chart, massively outperforming the S&P 500. And on the 1st of November, Wingstop presented quarterly earnings with a beat on EPS and revenue. For the upcoming earnings mid-February, almost all analysts expect another beat on earnings, potentially pushing this stock up. More on that later in this video. People love Wingstop stock because of multiple reasons and one of them being the growth. But they also pay an interesting dividend with dividend yield at 0.34%, which is a pretty low number of course. But look at that 5 year growth streak of 20%. And if we look at the past 5 years, we see that Wingstop again massively outperforms the S&P 500, and this is including dividends. So could this be the perfect time to buy Wingstop stock? Well, by the end of the video I will give you my 3 price targets, so make sure to stay tuned and see how I build up to these price targets. And more importantly, which price target is the most justified in my opinion? I'm very excited to see what you guys think about this stock, so please let me know your thoughts in the comments. My name is Thomas and this is Thomas Invest. I'm an investor looking for great stocks at great prices. So what does Wingstop do? Founded in 1994 in Garland, Texas, Wingstop is a restaurant operator specializing in indulgent bone-in and boneless chicken wings, chicken tenders, fries and chicken sandwiches. The firm's footprint has grown quickly since its inception, reaching nearly 2,000 global stores at the end of 2022, rendering Wingstop the fourth largest restaurant chain in the US by system sales. With a 98% franchise model, Wingstop generates the lion's share of its revenue from franchise royalties and advertising fees, with the remainder derived from a small free footprint of the company-owned stores. When we dive in the most recent earnings report, we see that the system-wide sales increased 26.5% to $885 million. Wingstop opens 53 new stores, and this is a very easy way of increasing the revenue. But you also want the existing stores to grow in revenue. Wingstop reported a same store sale of 15%, which is an insane number. Also the digital sales increase looks really good to me. And with that, the total revenue increased 26% to $117 million. More importantly, the net income increased 46%, which also looks really good to me. And here we see the financial outlook for the full year of 2023, which is reported mid-February 2024. And one of the most interesting numbers here is the 16% same store sale growth, which previously was forecasted at 10 to 12%. On top of that, they plan to open 240 to 250 new units, which is also very nice. And as of right now, there are 2,099 Wingstop restaurants, of which are 1,837 located in the US, of which 1,791 were franchised, and 46 restaurants are owned. The international market includes 262 franchise restaurants. Another interesting thing is that total cost of sales is decreasing year over year, which is a good thing. And by decreasing I mean in ratio. It went from 78 to 73.6%, so this looks really good. A thing that I would love to see is more company owned restaurants, so that's something to keep your eye on. And now that you know a bit more about the company, it is time to check the fundamentals of this stock. But first, if you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you lots for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to my channel to receive multiple analysis every week. And also join my Discord channel for free to meet other people within the community and to talk about stocks. It's completely free so don't miss it out. Let's continue by diving into the fundamentals. Wingstop stock is a 8.1 billion market cap company. PE ratio is at 117, indicating they are at a premium price right now. Later in this video I will show you my 3 price targets for Wingstop stock, so make sure to watch until the end. And in the meantime, please let me know your thoughts on the current valuation on Wingstop stock, and I'm also interested to hear your thoughts in general on this company. Revenue is at 437 million, and in this graph we see the revenue went up in the long run. And this is one of the main reasons why I like this company so much. It is growing so consistently for a restaurant company. 
margins are going up and down over a longer period of time. Most recently they started to increase again, and to be honest I want to see a better growth pattern here. Of course they are growing which leads to fluctuating margins, however I still want to see better growth numbers here. And EPS is looking much better and more following the trend of the revenue, so this looks good to me. Analysis expect that EPS is growing really nice and steady in the coming years, all the way up to $5.62 per share. On a yearly average you're looking at 17-23% to increase. To me this looks really good. For the revenue analysis expect pretty much the same pattern. The only difference is that the growth numbers are a little bit lower, with 13-17% to growth per year on average. Return on assets is sitting at 10% which is a great number. Return on equity looks really bad and the most important number return on invested capital is sitting at minus 41%, which is also a really bad number. So definitely keep an eye on those two numbers. For now this is a potential red flag. Current ratio is at 1.97 which is a decent number for a restaurant company. The thing that concerns me a bit is the fact that it is increasing over a longer period of time. We want this number not to be too high. Right now Wingstop has 728 million in debt and I prefer companies that can pay down at least a big chunk of their total debt with the total cash. Wingstop has roughly 78 million in total cash so they can't pay down a big chunk of their debt. This is something that I don't like. So it is very important that free cash flow is growing, since this is used to pay down debt of course, but also to buy back shares, pay dividends and all other things. And here we see that free cash flow is going up in the long run at a pretty steady and consistent pace, except for 3 years which were lockdown related, so to me this looks really good. Shares outstanding are increasing in the long run, which is something that I don't like in most cases. However, to me this stock looks a bit at a premium price and in a growth stage, so I can't blame them for increasing shares and raise capital in order to grow the business. When shares outstanding are decreasing, it increases your ownership in the company, increases the EPS, lowers the PE ratio and makes it easier to maintain and increase the dividends. And since we're talking about dividends anyways, dividend yield is sitting at 0.34%, which is a low number of course. Animal payout is at $0.88 and paid ratio is at 32%. I prefer 50% or lower so right now they have 68% left in cash to buy back shares, pay down debt, do acquisitions and all other things. And now it gets really interesting. The 5 year growth rate is at 20% which is an insane number. They have increased the dividend for 6 years in a row which is also really impressive. And if you take a look at these numbers, the dividends paid since 2016, you see that Wingstop did increase the dividends at a high pace, but it is a bit diluting since they paid supplemental dividends as well. Payout ratio is a very important metric with dividends, it tells you if the dividends are safe. And here we see that payout ratio is coming down big time, which is a good thing. In this graph we see the expected dividends in 2024 and 2025. Of course this is an estimation that can be highly impacted by results, but it gives you a rough indication. It's expected to increase at the same rate as the past couple of years. Overall these dividends look really interesting to me, but how about the historical returns? I decided to compare Wingstop stock with the overall market, in this case the S&P 500. Next to that I added TXRH and QSR. On the 5 year chart we see that Wingstop massively outperforms all stocks in this list with a 327% total return including dividends. The S&P 500 is sitting at 101%. Both TXRH and QSR had significantly lower returns. On the 1 year chart things look pretty interesting. Wingstop did beat all stocks in this list by a significant amount again. All the others are sitting around 20% return. On the 6 month chart it is again Wingstop with the highest return sitting at 34%. All the others are sitting at much lower returns. On the 1 month chart you guessed it Wingstop had again the highest return with a total of 8%. Bottom line Wingstop beats the S&P 500 and 2 other similar stocks with a significant difference in both the short run and the long run. So could this be the perfect time to buy Wingstop stock? 
Well, let's check the three price targets that are created using the Everything Money software, which is one of the best tools out there. I'm using a low, mid and high assumption to get the three price targets, starting off with revenue growth. For the revenue growth I'm filling in 18, 20 and 22%, based on historical performance, their own outlook, but also because of the analysis. For the profit margin I'm putting in 18, 20 and 22. For the free cash flow margin I'm putting in slightly higher numbers. For the PE ratio I'm putting in 22.5, 25 and 27.5. For the price of free cash flow, I'm putting in the same numbers. My desired annual return is 12.5% since I can get an easy 10% average annual return with owning an ETF. Right now Wingstop stock is at $274. I hit analyze and we see only red numbers. We have a low price target of $126 to $133. We have a mid price target of $177 to $185 and we have a high price target of $244 to $255. And to be honest, I did put in pretty high growth numbers in all cases, but it looks like the stock is still overvalued. To me, the mid price target is the most justified here, meaning the company needs to do a better job to be at a more fair valuation. So what do you think is the most justified price target here? My final conclusion on Wingstop stock is that I love the business. They are growing at such a high pace and most fundamentals look really good. However, the margin is not really increasing at a high pace and I know it takes time to do this, don't get me wrong. But I would love to see more owned restaurants and better margin increases. From a dividend point of view, things are also very interesting with a really low yield but a great dividend growth track record for such a young company. I wouldn't prefer a higher dividend yield by increasing the dividend. The payout ratio is around 30% which I think is reasonable for a company in this stage. I prefer most of the money that goes back into the business. From a value point of view, I think I made my point in the previous chapter. It looks overvalued even with some high growth expectations. For now, I'm skipping on this stock since it doesn't really fit in my portfolio. However, I do think it's a really interesting dividend growth stock that has a lot of potential. So I'll add them to my watch list and wait for the earnings and analyze them from time to time. And remember to always do your own research and never fully trust on what I or other YouTubers say about the stock. I'm not a financial advisor and this content is just for entertaining purposes only. I hope you liked this video and I did bring some insights of the company to you. I would really appreciate a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to get notified when I'm posting a new video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in my next video.